for the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My brethren, today we're going back to studying the passage in the book of Amos. Amos is part of the Old Testament, and you can find it very easily. First, you'll find Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and then Amos. And we shall find some great lessons from God in that book, and it shall be a great blessing. So get ready to be enlightened by the holy word of the Lord God. And then later when we say our prayers, to receive that wonderful, blessed touch from the hand of our Lord God. Shall we open our Bibles to Amos then? We started with chapter 1. I'm going to talk about that very briefly, and then we'll start studying a new subject. In verse number 1, let's read. The words of Amos, who was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake, Amos was not a prophet. In chapter 7, verse number 14, he says he was a sheep breeder, or a shepherd if you prefer, and he was a tender of sycamore fruit. But he was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa. He tended sheep. And then Amos was there watching. These sheep breeders are the kind of men that God uses to tend to and to gather his sheep. And by observing everything that was happening, Amos had a vision. It's good that you are among the sheep breeders, not exactly in the physical sense, but through the things that God has been giving them to preach. The way to pray, the way to do the work of God, because we are all following God's plans here. It's just useless if one of us decides to go ahead or gets lazy, you know, because if they decide to go ahead, they won't do anything. If they become lazy, they're going to miss out on God's blessings. We have to let God use us, my brethren, and we need to be consecrated and see how God wants us to be used, but within the limits that God gives us in his holy word. Faith is our limit. Anyone can say, I'll become the greatest preacher in the world. That's just foolish. Unless God gives them the anointing, they won't become anything. About 20 years ago, I was talking about some disciples in the faith, not here at the Grace of God Church, but whose souls I've won for Jesus when I was young. Let's say one of them was Joseph. I said, Joseph, aren't you going to obey? Dr. Suarez, I'm getting prepared for that. And when I get started, it won't be one of those small churches where you see defeated pastors. I will have a church attended by 150,000 and stuff, and I thought, poor man, that's never going to happen. And he never got started. You see, it's not the man who does things. It's God who wants things done. Now, Amos was there watching, and while he watched, he noticed a few things. And Israel, mentioned in this passage, was not that Israel from the days of David. That uh, a, a separation had occurred. Ten tribes comprised the kingdom of the north, which was named Israel and two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, which were given the name Judah. And concerning these ten tribes, their kings were just terrible. This Jeroboam mentioned in the passage here is not the one who separated the tribes, that was the second one. The first one had been dead for a long time, and he was just terrible. He was so jealous of Jerusalem because people would go to Jerusalem to worship the Lord God, and so he established a temple in Samaria at a place, and he made two calves of gold. And can you believe he had the nerve to say, O Israel, here are your gods which brought you up from the land of Egypt. And all the other kings who came after him, none of them destroyed those calves. All of them respected them. And the consequence of that is that none of them was good. Any person who's not attached to the word of God, if they learn something is wrong and they fail to erase that from their heart, they will never be what God had planned them to be. Therefore, they will end up missing all the blessings of God. So Amos saw that in those days and two years before the earthquake. God punished them with the great earthquake, serious and harmful, and yet they still didn't make amends with God. Shall we take a look at chapter 3, verse number 3 now? You see, I picked up a few, uh, a few verses for us to study. From the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse number 3. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? If we want to work together with God, we have to agree with what God says. And God's words are not conveyed through the mouth of man. It is transmitted by preaching the word, by meditating when you understand the word. God talks to each and every one of us in person. I can't try to force things to happen. I'll do this or that or the... No, no, no. Let God use you. If God wants us to have a church that's twice, 10 times, 50 times bigger than this one here, that's what he'll do. But if God wants it to be half this size, then it'll be that. 
It's God himself who does the work, and we need to walk together with him. If we don't do that, unless there's a mutual agreement, then it's all worthless. Mutual agreement takes place by following the word of God. If the word says something, I don't want that. But you're being insane. You have to make that arrangement, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to do it. I don't feel it in my heart. God sees things before you. Whoever commits themselves to anything other than the holy word of God, they're committing themselves to the wrong person. The only person we have to have a commitment with is the Lord Jesus Christ to the word of God. So it's necessary that we have a mutual agreement. And now let's read what it says in verse number seven, my brethren. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So my brethren, it's always good that you pay close attention to the preaching. Because when a man of God is preaching, he's actually spreading the word. So sometimes it can be about future events in your life or for all of society. But he is still prophesying. The word prophecy in the Bible, in addition to being used as a warning, as a prediction of future things, he who prophesies speaks about edification and exhortation. Therefore, when a man of God is, is preaching, he's also prophesying. And God won't do absolutely anything at all. Nothing. Nothing is nothing. Without having told his prophets about it. His servants, the prophets. When they are servants of God, they won't only hope to be used by the Lord God, or perhaps God is not using them, because sometimes people can actually see God, but that's not God's plan. Sometimes people seek that out of jealousy or out of greed or other similar reasons or justifications, but not us. We need to follow the word. God has been using us. I don't need to go beyond whatever God's been giving me. I don't need to want to, to be the greatest and start saying bad things about other churches. I don't have the right to say bad things at all. They're servants of Christ. Let them render accounts to Jesus. If I feel that they're wrong, then I'm going to pray for them. If I feel they're right, I'm going to pray for them as well. God, please bless them. Because no one can take away what God has prepared for me. And I don't need to throw anyone under the butt. This is not an attitude of a child of God. Secular people will do that. They want everything for themselves. They lie, deceive, they make inappropriate arrangements. They make fun and laugh at others, not us. We have to be the people that God wants us to be. However, I need to be completely aware of the fact that God won't do anything without having revealed his secret to his servants, his prophets. Therefore, whenever someone is preaching and prophesying and you feel it uh, deep down in your heart and you feel that blessing belongs to you, that's what God's doing. He's revealed the secrets to the prophets. Sometimes he does that in a very clear way. They come and say, listen, folks. So I was meditating on the word and the word said this and that. Other times they can't understand it. But they're preaching and the Holy Spirit is using them and they're learning. Many times I learn while I'm preaching. Sometimes I'm preaching and I feel that confirmation. That's right. So if God is going to do something and he really wants to do it, and he's doing something huge in the world by saving people, that happens through the pastors, the preachers, the prophets to whom he reveals his secrets. Now, now Amos was among the sheep breeders and he saw what was going to happen to Israel. And so he warned them, he preached to them, he said to them, repent yourselves, this is not the way to go, come back, but they didn't turn back. They simply kept on being stubborn. And what happened to that nation? It vanished into thin air. Shalmaneser went and carried everybody away captive to Assyria. They were distributed among the nations and they never became a nation again and no one has ever heard anything about them again. They just vanished, they died, something else must have happened, but that was it. We heard stories about Judah and Benjamin, which continued to exist. He was taken to Babylon as a slave because they were also rebellious, but they went back later to, to Israel, but we never heard anything about the others. But then they went back, but not to Judah anymore, but to Israel instead because that name belonged to them as a matter of fact. The other ones completely vanished. Do you want to know what God is doing, what God wants from you? Don't be anxious, brethren, wanting to know everything. I'm going to serve the Lord. 
and I'm going to watch just like Amos did and I'm going to see among the sheep breeders what is going on. I'm going to pay close attention to the message and when it comes from God, it will burn inside your heart. You're going to feel it. That's the way to go. That's God's commandment. This is what I have to do. And when you take up your position in the Holy Word, God shall be by your side to deliver on that word, to give you the blessing that you deserve. Now let's read verse number four from the same chapter three. This is what is written. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? When the lion catches his prey, then the lion roars to celebrate his conquest. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? Whenever you receive God's blessing, you're going to roar out then. When the pastor has God's anointing, he will preach. But if he's not preaching the word of God, then he doesn't have God's anointing. Then you should pray for them rather than bad-mouthing them. God, our pastor needs your holy anointing. I'll be coming to your house on Sunday. I need to hear new words, God. He's being kind of repetitive. He hasn't been really inspiring lately. He doesn't seem to know what to do. I really appreciate it when you pray for me. Every time you think about me, please say a prayer. God put in the mouth of Dr. Suarez the words that will lift me up. And the moment that I have caught my prey, just like that lion, I shall roar. I will deliver the message. My faith will be immediately prompted. And when my faith is prompted, God starts to do work through my mouth. A young lion there in his den, in his cave, you know, will he cry out of his den as it's written here in the word of God? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? Once he catches his prey, he becomes a giant. He becomes stronger. We want you all to become lions, roaring out to the world. Therefore, we need to catch our prey and hold on to it. That's our revelation. We need to cry out to God because without any prophecy, the revelation of the word, people will become corrupted. We have to look at our congregation and we shouldn't expect to get smaller as punishment from God. It's the opposite. Punishment was suffered by Jesus. May our congregation develop because it's being fed by the word of God. The prey is in its hands and with that prey, it can now get energy and strength and it can do whatever God wants it to do. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? And will a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? My brethren, young lions need to catch prey. They need their prey, they celebrate that. They were able to catch and kill their prey. People of God, let's all be together. Pray for us and we shall help you all, always. Now still talking about the lion, let's move on to verse number eight. Let's read. Still in chapter 3, a lion has roared, who will not fear? That's the other side of the story. Let's say we're out there in the streets of a big city and all of a sudden there appears a lion and it starts to roar out, everyone will run away. <laughs> no one's crazy enough to stick around. Even the paralytic will get rid of his crutches, he'll jump up the wall, he will be able to escape no matter what. <laughs> listen carefully. You listen to him because the lion is the king of the jungle. What about God? Who is he? Let's take a look. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophecy? And sadly, many won't do that. Sad enough, God will speak directly to some people and they choose not to speak up. They choose not to determine and to give a command. They won't take up the position that God has given them. And they're behaving in a way that is completely stupid. Because whenever God says something, he is way ahead of us so that he can open any doors as necessary and he will give us victory. And when God isn't speaking to us, it's time for us to seek him, to pray. God is silent. He's not speaking. So we have to be praying. God, I want to hear your voice. I want to understand you. Then you will feel deep in your heart that revelation that enlightens you and you will prophesy on the spot. Wise people prophesy. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm going to take this blessing and my life's going to change at this moment. And then you praise the Lord and give him glory and believe it and it will happen. When you feel the touch of God in your heart, when he touches you, it could be the darkest night out there, there could be the worst storm ever, but you can smile 
because the time of suffering is over. This is going to be the last night. My day is rising because the storm will come, but it will go away. There is no storm that will last forever. And so when you feel it and you're enlightened by the word, you can start praising the Lord in the middle of the storm right there. But what's going on? My day is rising. You will see the beautiful day that's ahead of me in the name of Jesus. It's necessary that the people of God have energy. It's necessary to commit yourselves. My brethren, we can't be a bunch of losers. No, no, we have to become a group of conquerors, of people who believe in the word, who pray for one another, who seek the Lord God. We're a family. We're all connected to the same purpose. We simply cannot let the enemy make fun of our faith and knock us down, keep laughing at us and making jokes. We actually need to pray for them. If a brother is living a sinful life, stop judging them. You should be judging the devil instead who is using them. And you have to pray that they will open their eyes so that they come to their senses and become a true blessing. Is he a loser now? What did I tell you? He's bankrupt. He was so proud of himself. Come on, don't do that, brethren. God, please help my brother. And if it's not really his fault, maybe it's my fault because I didn't pray for him. Lift him up so that he can become a true blessing. This shall make a great testimony of the gospel. And the Lord God is speaking to you. Once God speaks to you, go ahead and prophesy. First listen to him carefully. Which way should I go, God? Those who haste will make a mistake. The Bible says, he sins who hastens with his feet. God is speaking to you. Sometimes it can take six months. I don't know how long Amos sat there and watched those shepherds. But Amos was among them, and he learned little by little. And he saw concerning Israel, he found out, that Israel was going to be defeated. They wouldn't listen to Amos, though, but they should have listened to him. He made comparisons among many different kings. He said three things, four things. He played with some words there so that they would pay attention, but those people kept on insisting on being defeated. And unfortunately, there are people today who insist on being defeated. People think that having an extramarital affair has been approved by God and that it shall be a true blessing forever. Well, it wasn't a blessing when it started and it shall not be at the end. And that love affair will eventually ruin those people. People think something dishonest was actually an answer from God. That was never an answer of God. And it will eventually ruin those people. The answer that God gives you is always pure. God said, be holy, for I am holy. Never commit yourselves to anyone. People will claim everything is good nowadays. But that's not good. It's a mistake. We don't need that. What we need is to fear the Lord God, to respect the Lord God, and to do as our Lord God commands us. If the lion roars, you must fear him and run away because something is about to happen. But if it's God who's speaking, then my brother prophecy. Don't be quiet. Don't see God as a being that is less than the lion. Of course he isn't. God spoke. It's quite the opposite. He is the Lord. What's a lion before God? He's worthless, brethren. If God flicks his finger, the lion will be sent straight to Mars and roll and go straight to Saturn and then Pluto and then to another galaxy. All it takes is God's finger. The lion can't take it, but our God is everything. And our Lord God can only use us today. After we leave this earth and go to eternity, there's no works there as there are here on earth. Today, we're engaged in a battle for the good of the work of God. It's good against evil. It's the light against darkness. It's love defeating hate. It's righteousness defeating iniquity. Amen, brethren? And now let's go to the real life drama for today. I had this great pain in my shoulders, right? So I went to the doctor, to a GP, and the doctor said I had bursitis. So I started to get treated for bursitis, but it didn't work. It didn't get any better. Then it was diagnosed as tendinitis. I started having my treatment at the state hospital, a famous one, very large. I was having physiotherapy sessions all week long, and as a matter of fact, I was told by the doctors my situation was hopeless, you know, because they said I had muscle atrophy, right? And they said I needed surgery on both shoulders so that this muscle would be removed because it was increasing and increasing and I was losing mass here. Let's say we noticed that she had some trouble to do the dishes, to do regular chores around the house, you know. I just couldn't raise my arms 
and move them around. Doing the dishes was just terrible for me. Oh, Jesus, please help me, God. I need help, you know it, God. Mm. All right, God, I'm done with that now. I had to take many pain medications. I felt a little bit better. The relief was enough so that I could live with the pain because otherwise it was unbearable. I would cry all by myself. A very simple massage as if you were touching or as if you were rubbing something very fragile. That was enough to hurt her already. They said perhaps I could never move normally again. Then I said to Marcia, I said to her, Marcia, I really believe in a living God and I know that I'll move normally. And she said, if you believe then, fight for it. Because the way we see it, you shall not move normally again unless you have surgery. I said, no man shall operate me. Deus Gina, who had drifted away, comes back to the Lord Jesus and starts to go to the Grace of God Church in her neighborhood. I went to the Grace of God Church and told my whole story to Pastor Zelino. When he said Dr. Suarez was coming, I spent the whole week fasting. And I determined that I wouldn't leave church without being healed from that problem. When Dr. Suarez finished his prayers, and I raised my arms, and for the glory and honor of the Lord, I clapped my hands. I did this. This is what I did. Look, it's something I couldn't do anymore, you know? I said, Pastor Zelino, I've been healed. Jesus healed me. Praise the Lord. What's your name? My name is Deus Dina. What did God do for you? Well, I have, well, I had this tendinitis condition since 2009. Tendinitis in the rotator cuff attachment, which I had never heard of. And since I came back to church... What couldn't you do? I couldn't raise my arms and I couldn't do this. Look. Please show the audience too. Turn this way so everyone can see you. I wasn't able to do this, you see? And how high could you raise your arms I raised back it up to here and I had to do this. What about now? Oh, Jesus, you're wonderful. Go with Jesus, she sister. She came home completely healed, thank God. Well, my joints. The doctor had said that they were all attached and that I would never, I could never do this ever again. But I did, and I praised the Lord for that, and I cried with happiness. I felt very happy because I was completely healed. And as of this day, I never needed any medications. I would never take them for the honor and glory of the Lord. Jesus is truly wonderful. The day she became healed, I had 13 meetings in Rio, and I delivered 26 messages. I gave two messages in every meeting, and all of that in 40 minutes. This is what I call an executive meeting. And that woman became healed. What really impresses me is how fast God does his work. The doctor wasn't lying when he said that her joints were, were all attached together. She did have that condition indeed, but in the twinkling of an eye, at the moment we prayed, God came and he healed her. And that's the God that we follow. Now let's go to the question and answer segment. Is it a sin to challenge the Word of God? Of course it is. You can ask God questions like, I don't understand it, please explain it. I used to have a problem like this, and I wasn't being used by the devil. I used to have a problem, listen to this. I read the book of James. And I was kind of mad at James because James, well, I was just a boy. I was very young. James's language, his way of speaking is a bit rough, you know. Now you rich, weep and howl, you know. But those are the manners God gave him. Until I finally learned about him, I actually thought the gospel of James shouldn't be in the Bible because it wasn't inspired. But I grew older and God showed me that there are so many great things in the book of James. It's just the way that he speaks. Something else I couldn't understand was this passage in the book of Chronicles and Kings. King John Doe did was right in the eyes of God. Nevertheless, the people continued to burn incense and the high places were not taken away. And he used to think, but God, please explain it to me. I'm not challenging you. I just want to learn. If the king did what was right, why did God punish him so badly? I mean, if people wanted to burn incense, what could the king do? Then one day you see everything that is in the Bible is a lesson for us. I was enlightened by this great revelation. I actually talked to another pastor. I remember where we were. We were going down the hill in my town. And I said, Brother, have you read this passage in the Bible? Yes. Do you know why? I don't know what it means. Well, I said to him, God just explained it to me. Many others came before us and did what was right. But they didn't put an end to black magic temples and altars. And people continued to go. We have to put an end to that because we were given the power. Whatever we bind here on earth 
shall be bound in the spiritual world. Whatever we unbind here shall be unbound there. And then people would come, as has always happened throughout history, manifesting the devil, and some of them were victims of evil things coming from there. And they were working in these temples to destroy other people. But then I called on the leader of the devils after the person manifested them, come here now, and he did. So I bound them all and said, this temple is coming down. And one after the other, they all went down. Praise the Lord for that. So when you see something in the Bible that you can't understand, remember the question she asked. You shouldn't challenge God, but ask him about it instead. All you have to do is say, my dear Lord, and very gently, very kind with the Lord God, you have to speak in a very gentle voice. You shouldn't argue with the Lord. God, I can't understand it. Please explain it to me and be honest because God is our Father and He will show you the way through His Word. To challenge God in the sense of asking Him questions, that's fine, but you can never be angry at Him. And now let's open your heart. Dr. Suarez, I watch the Faith Show every day and I need some guidance. My husband has manifested demons in our household. Every night he offends me with many words. He threatens to move out and move in with another woman. He also won't let me go to church. Dr. Suarez, I love my husband and I pray that he can be delivered. What else can I do? I think I just told you. You need to pay attention and when God speaks to you, you go in prophecy. And today this is all going to end. The Bible says, and God never lies, the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband and the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Your husband is being manifested through the devil, so he really wants to leave. You are the one who is leaving now in the name of Jesus. Not the husband, but the devil is going to leave. Say those words to the devil. But you have to be gentle with your husband. Everyone should be treated gently. And sometimes they've been under great pressure in their life. We're not exactly sure why. And that is causing them to make inappropriate decisions. But with love, my brethren, love is stronger than death. The strongest thing in this world sounds like the weakest one before love, but love is irresistible. The love you have for God in your life shall conquer back your husband. Let's pray now for those who are at home. God, thank you for your words today, for your guidance. God, please touch these people. Heal them, God. Deliver them. God, speak directly to their hearts so that these people can prophesy. And now I say to all the evil demons affecting their lives that they leave now and go away in the name of the Lord Jesus.